Hey, this is Jared over to eCarrier Check. Hey, uh, jumping into uh, the second second part of our, our sales series, and, and today we're really going to talk about building trust with prospects and things that I did in order to be able to find a connection, find a way to, to link up with these people and, and differentiate yourself from other brokers. They're getting a lot of different calls, right? So I really want to talk about you know, some of the things that I've observed and seen from brokers maybe that are being successful and, and then on the flip side, you know, what people are doing that, that may not be getting uh, any success. And, you know, I've heard a couple different people talk about, you know, well, I'm open to calling anybody or I don't really care what, uh, what kind of equipment uh, I move. Let me just, you know, let me just move stuff. And I really think it's important uh, especially as you're jumping into this space of being a freight broker, a professional freight broker is is finding some kind of niche, something that interests you, um, and and keeping it as simple as possible uh, in in your arena. And so, finding a niche, I think, is is number one. And and how you're going to find a niche is. What interests you? What what are things that, that you find interesting? Maybe it's big machines or maybe it's, you know, you like retail. Um, you know, maybe it's a part of the country that that seems to be, you know, I like this kind of commodity. I'm moving corn or cotton or, you know, something to that extent. So I think it's important that you identify a niche, whether that's in equipment, whether that's in geographic experience, or it's a specific kind of industry that you seem to understand and, and know. So that's number one. Um, obviously, you know, utilizing e-carrier check is an easy way to find all three of those aspects, but there are ways to do this via Google, uh, via YouTube, via social media sites, LinkedIn, those things like that. So um, I, I do recommend finding that niche. The second thing, once you start finding and building that prospecting list and get, get 25, 30, 50 people on there, Find out everything about those companies. Don't, do not try to call these people without doing your homework. I think that's first and foremost. If you get on the phone with them and they start asking you questions, you gotta be prepared. That's, that's a big thing. So understand who you need to talk to. There's ways of finding them on LinkedIn or, or Facebook or, or things like that, Instagram. Um, and then working your way backwards, check out their website, understand what they do. Uh, it's important when you pick up that phone and you call these people, you gotta understand you are interrupting their day, right? And they've probably had a hundred other people call them as well. So you're not the only one. So how do you differentiate yourself? You, you respect their time, number one. I think that's first and foremost. They could be right in the middle of a project and they just need to continue to focus and they just happen to pick up the phone, right? If they didn't pick up the phone, leave a voicemail. Hey, this is Jared with ABC Logistics. I'm reaching out because I'm, I'm good at moving trucks in your area. I'm good at moving in things in, in that area. So they understand and hear your voice and hear your company's name. It could take seven, eight calls, to be honest with you. But if that's a customer that you feel is, is one that could be a good fit, you got to keep going. You got to stay consistent. I think that's half the battle, right? The other aspect of this is how do you build value? How do you show value to these people that may not be answering phones? Well, find their email. There, it's out there. There's somewhere out there in a database that you can find, find their email. Maybe it's on LinkedIn. Maybe it's on a different site that you can use to get this. And start sending them articles in regards to the industry, the, something about their company something that you guys relate about. But I think it's important, you've got to start building trust and you gotta do it from the very beginning. If these people get on the phone and they say, hey, you know, this is, this is Jared from XYC Manufacturing, you know, again, respect their time, say, hey, I'd like to see if there's 15 minutes that we could talk in the next week or, or possibly later this week. And we talk about specifically your logistics and how you find carriers. Would there be a good time? People find that when you respect their time, they'll give you more time. Sometimes they'll be like, I got time now. Sometimes they'll say, hey, Thursday, next, next Thursday at two o'clock, I got 20 minutes. Perfect. But respect their time. That's number one. 
Um, when they send you something, respect their time. Respond back quickly. Find a way to get back to those people. And that may be from either, either maybe they need a quote, right? Or they need some information about your company. Um, get back to those people. Give them the time and, and especially while it's hot, while the communication is there, work with that, okay? Um, secondly, let them know what technology you're using in order to differentiate yourself from, from other brokers. You know, it's, I think that's important. You know, there's some awesome technology out there and maybe you're using the best visibility platform or maybe you're using a, a better way to find carriers or or maybe you're have a better TMS that allows you to communicate differently uh, that, that differentiate yourself but I, I would definitely make sure you're using those things stay consistent stay humble and you'll find your way into clients I promise you that guys I appreciate your time I appreciate you listening if you have any questions, comments, let me know. I, I'm always an open book. Um, but those, uh, the, what I'm sharing is just how I was able to uh, find success. So have a great day, guys, and we'll talk later.